Okay, so there's two methods we can use to get SMRPG randomizer on the Wii. One of them is via emulator, and one of them is via WAD injection. Emulator is easy to set up, and I'm pretty sure it definitely supports both Japanese and English randomizer. Uh, WAD injection is higher fidelity. It's probably like the best quality emulation you can get on a Wii, but I think it can only support J. I only got it to work on J. The U one just crashed. So, but if you want to try WAD injection for US SMRPG randomizer, be my guest. I just can't guarantee that it'll work for you. Anyway, first thing you gotta do to install the randomizer is to have the homebrew channel installed. This is a brand new Wii, so I don't have it, so if you're somebody that has never installed Homebrew Channel before, I'll show you what you gotta do. First thing you wanna do is go down here to Wii Options, go to your Wii Settings. First of all, make a note up here in the corner of what that number in that letter says. If it says 4.3, you're okay. If it's anything other than 4.3, you gotta find another homebrew guide and come back here once I'm talking about RetroArch and stuff. This method here is only gonna work for 4.3. Anyway, a uh, letter afterwards doesn't matter, that just is about what region your Wii is from. So hit next, uh, go to internet, and go to console information, and make note of your MAC address, write it down somewhere because it's gonna be important for the next step. Also, be sure that under your connection settings you have at least one connection set up because you're going to need it later. Uh, make sure that your Wii is able to connect to the internet before you proceed. Anyway, next thing you want to do is go to please.hackme.com in your browser. That's please.hackme.com. What you're going to do here is enter in your Wii's MAC address. I'm an idiot. It got rid of my thing. Okay, 58BDA3... E eight eight nine BF. Okay. What? No, BF. Yeah. Cut the red wire. Okay. So this is gonna download to your downloads folder this uh, letterbomb.zip file. So what you wanna do with that is have an SD card. Put the SD card in your computer. Open up the root of your SD card. For me, that's my G drive. This is my SD card. Just drag all this and stick it right in the root of your SD card. Just like that. Once that's done copying, uh, take the SD card out of your computer and put it in your Wii. So once you put the SD card in your Wii, it'll uh, it'll light up at the bottom. See how that little thing just lit up blue? That means it sees my SD card. So now what's important is. This button over here, the Wii message board, what's supposed to happen is under this gray envelope icon is supposed to be the number one, but it's not showing up yet. So I'm just gonna go in here and like flip through dates for a little bit or something. I don't know. I'm just gonna press a bunch of buttons. Go back to the Wii menu. And oh, look, the one showed up. Sometimes just mashing buttons inside the message board will get it to work. So open up Wii message board. And you see this red envelope with a bomb inside, click on that, and then this will load. This is perfectly fine. Don't worry. This is just installing the homebrew channel. So this installer uh, warning will appear here for about a minute. I just gotta wait for it to light up with a message at the bottom that tells you about uh, pressing A to continue. Or pressing 1 or something, I don't know, whatever it's gonna say. It'll show up in like a sec. Okay, press 1 to continue. So just press 1 on your Wiimote. Come here. Hit continue. Use a Wiimote for this. Go up to install the Homebrew channel right there. Yes, continue. And it'll install the Homebrew channel. And it's successful, so continue. And we're all done. You don't have to install BootMe. It's pretty good to have, but you don't need it for this. So just exit. And now we are in the homebrew channel, so let's exit out of here, go back to our main menu, just so you can see what it looks like on your home menu. And there we have it, there's the homebrew channel.
Awesome. So, next thing that you're going to do is generate the randomized ROM for Mario RPG. So the first thing you have to do, if you want to play it in Japanese or in US, just get a copy of the ROM you want to play on. I'm not going to tell you where to get that, you got to find that yourself. But once you do find it, it's a good idea to just validate and see if it's the correct version of the ROM. So, I'm just going to show you that on my desktop I have this folder games where I've got everything I need already in here. I've got my Japanese ROM, my American ROM, and my Japanese WAD. We're going to focus on the SMC files right now. Um, yours is probably going to have a different name. I just renamed mine to smrpgj.smc because it's easier to type for later on when we're uh, running the randomizer. So if you want to rename your SMC files to something easier, go ahead and do that now. It's not going to change anything as far as functionality is concerned. So we want to verify that, th that these ROMs are legit. We're going to go to uh, winmd5.com and hit winmd5 freeware download. Open this up. Uh, bring winmd5 onto your desktop. And now what you can do is open up WinMD5 and you have this little dialog here. There's two hash codes, one for J, one for US, that you can find on uh, the SMRPG randomizer GitHub page, which is here. So you see these two files here? These, are these, these two lines here are going to be pretty important. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm gonna test the JSMC file first, just drop it onto there, and copy the J code from GitHub's README into here, and hit verify. Okay, so it says they match, so I know that my JROM is legit. And try that with the US SMC as well, but use the US code, and hit verify again. And that one matched as well. So my JROM and my UROM are legit. The randomizer will work with them. If it do, if the checksum that you get doesn't match what it says in GitHub, then you gotta find another ROM, that's all. If it matches, then we can just continue on. So we're done with 1MD5. Next thing to do is to... On, on this page, uh, the GitHub page for the SMRPG randomizer, which is at github.com slash abyssalnim slash smrpg underscore gbrp, this little button here in the corner, clone or download, you're going to click on that, and then hit download zip. So that's going to download another zip file. Um, what you want to do is extract that to your desktop. Just open up the zip file. And you got this folder inside called SMRPG GBART Master. Just drop that right onto your desktop and close the zip. So now what we do is I'm going to open up this. It's uh, the folder that we just downloaded has an executable in there called SMRPG underscore GBARP. So I'm going to I'm going to make a randomizer for both Japanese and US just for demonstration purposes. So I'm going to copy my ROM files into the root folder of uh, gbart master and then I'm gonna run the executable now I just made things really easy for myself because I gave my ROMs easy names and I have them in the same folder as the executable so all I have to do is type smrpgj.smc and it randomizes it we don't know what the seed or the flags are gonna be yet because those haven't been decided for the randomizer race yet so it's just generating the ROM now it says it's it's done successfully, output file name, enter to close this program. So now we see we have this new file, smrpg, with a bunch of numbers at the end. This is our new randomized ROM. So I'm going to do that again for the US ROM. Okay, so now we have our two ROMs, which is good. So now that we have the ROMs, there's two ways that you can play this on your Wii. Um, one of them is with an emulator, and I'm going to be showing how to use RetroArch, and the other one is with uh, an injected WAD, which is a lot harder to do, like it's more complicated, but it's probably the closest you're going to get to playing on a Super Nintendo. So, 
I'm going to show the first option, which is emulating with RetroArch. Okay, back to my browser. First thing you want to do is download RetroArch.7z from buildbot.libretro.com uh, for the Wii. So download this file here. Next thing you want to do is grab your SD card, put it back in your computer. Now open up your SD card, and in the root of your SD card, very base of it, make a new folder called apps. And inside apps, make a new folder called RetroArch. And then inside RetroArch, you're going to open up uh, the seventh folder, take everything that's in here, and just drop it right in there. So everything that's in the 7-zip, you're going to drop into your RetroArch folder that you just made on your SD card. So that's it for RetroArch so far. Uh, go back to the root of your SD card and make a new folder called ROMs. And now what you're going to do is take your randomized ROMs and copy paste them into your ROMs folder on your SD card, just like that. So we have our ROMs inside our SD card and we have an emulator that's going to run on Homebrew Channel. So now let's see how that looks like. Uh, take your SD card out. Put it back in your Wii. Wait for it to light up blue just like it did there. And launch Homebrew Channel. So the first thing you see is RetroArch. Just press A. Hit load. And this is going to boot up the emulator. First thing you do is hit load core. Scroll down until you see SNES 9X next live retro Wii dot dull and press A. Screen will go black for a sec and then you'll come back here. This is fine. Go to load content, select file, SD, ROMs, the folder we just made, and hit whichever one you want to run. I'm going to show J first. And here we go, now it's loading SMRPG. And there's a new game. Let's see what happens in Bowser's Castle. So not much has changed so far. Now, um, as with most SNES emulators, there are some sound sync issues with SMRPG, and that's just something that we'll have to deal with, I guess. Don't really know how to fix that. Maybe that can be changed with RetroArch settings, I don't know. So we can see that this has been successfully randomized because when we go into our first battles, let's get into a fight with this guy. I have an attack that is clearly not jump. In fact, I'm pretty sure it's group hug. I think that's group hug. And this is interesting looking. <laughs> okay, so you get the idea. Sometimes there will be other enemies that appear here, but, uh, what are his stats like, I wonder? That was some pretty good attack power. Anyway, that's, uh, that's SMRPG, uh, that's a Japanese one. I'm gonna close it. Then I'm gonna go back and load content, select file, I'm gonna... I'm gonna load up the US one. Whoops, I went to the wrong folder. Wait, no, I didn't. Okay, I don't know what happened. Where'd my ROM go? Okay, I maybe I have to load the core again. Whoop. 
There we go. I just had to load the core again. Bear don't see your ROMs, just load the SNES 9x next core. So here's the US version. Oh my, what the? Okay, so now Bowser's the main character. Once again, opening cutscene hasn't changed very much, but the fact that Bowser was at the opening cutscene, I think that kind of indicates that this was a successful ROM hack. Alright, let's have a look at these terrapins. Nice terrapin, Manip. Alright, what do we got? Just one terrapin? That's pretty nice. Oh my goodness, that is bad news. I can't use Ultra Jump. I got pretty good HP though. How's my attack? What? That's some good attack stats. What the crap are these stats even? Anyway, that's uh, that's Retro Arch. So, the next option that we have is to emulate with Wad Injection, which is a little bit higher fidelity if uh, you're kind of a stickler for wanting to play it super accurate. Uh, I'm gonna quit out a Retro Arch, then I'm gonna go back to my PC. Because what you want to do now is, uh, whoops, this is the system menu. What you're gonna do now is take out your SD card and put it back in your computer. So once again, back to the SD card. So back in the root folder, we have a. We have a folder called apps, which is going to be important again, but I need to make a new folder called WAD, just like that. We can refresh that, put it in alphabetical order. Okay, next thing you got to do is go back into your browser, and you want to go to Mediafire and download this file called iOS 236 installer v6. Download this, open it up, and in your apps folder on your SD card, you're going to drag this particular folder called iOS 236. You're just going to drop that right into your apps folder. Um, next thing that you want to do is go back to your browser and download this file here, the 12411C iOS X Rev 20 installer. And once again, you're just going to open this up. You got this folder here. Take this folder and just drop it right into SD apps. And you're going to download one more thing from uh, code.google.com. You're downloading uh, this uh, WAD manager. So just click on yawmm.zip, open it up, and also drop that into your apps folder on your SD card. Oh, wait, no, sorry, I messed up. Don't do that. If you, what you're going to do instead is. Inside your inside ywmm.zip, open up ywmm, open up apps, then take this folder called WAD Manager and dump that inside the apps folder on your SD card. So this is how it should look. If you have a folder called ywmm here with another apps folder inside it, that might not be very good. So just get rid of that and do it like this. Okay. So next important thing to do is remove any and all GameCube memory cards from your Wii. That's very important to do. Once you've done that, take your SD card out of your computer, plug it back into your Wii, 
Wait for that little blue light to come up and once again it'll go back into the homebrew channel. So now we got four things in here. These are all the things you might have noticed that are inside our apps folder that we were messing around with on the computer. First thing to boot up is iOS 236 install v6. You gotta pay very close attention when you're installing this. So hit load. This is important. Press 1 to start the application. Press 1. Now since we're connected to the internet, use your D-pad left and right and hit download iOS from NUS and press A. Okay, now press A again to start the install. Okay, once you get here, pay very, very, very close attention. We are doing an SMRPG randomizer, so most people watching this video already speedrun this game, and if you speedrun this game, chances are you have a legit copy of the game, because, like, playing SMRPG on emulator, like, on a PC kind of blows. So, make sure you press 2. Don't press 1, press 2. Because we're not, we're not being pirates here, we're, we're legitimate gamers. Just press any button, exit. Go back to homebrew menu. Okay, that scary part's over. Next thing you want to do is open up the one at the top, CIOS installer. Hit load. We're going to have uh, three options here. Uh, the music's a little loud, I'll turn it down a little bit. Okay, so first option we're going to select is here where it says iOS 249. We want to scroll back and hit iOS 236, which is the thing we just installed. Next thing we gotta do is hit A to accept the disclaimer. Uh, scroll back to iOS 36, 38607, that's what we want. Then hit 249 here. And instead of wide installation, hit network installation. This is why you need to be connected to the internet so it can download the files that you need. So the installer is done, just gotta wait for this to finish uh, what it's doing. take a while sometimes. There we go. Any button to continue and now I'm gonna get out of here and head back to the whole menu. Okay, so the next thing you want to do is take the SD card out again and put it inside your computer once more. Now what I'm going to do is go back to my desktop. Uh, one thing you're going to need to do is download a Japanese WAD file of Mario RPG on Virtual Console. That's the one that we're going to use to inject the randomizer ROM into. 
So in order to, uh, I'm not going to tell you where that's located. You're going to have to find that yourself once again. But, um, for, in order to actually do the injection, there is a tool that we can use, which is on, in, in Mediafire as well. I'll have a link available in the description. Uh, so hit download. It's called Wide Editing Tools. Open that up. And inside Wide Editing Tools, there's a folder called Auto Injector. You want to extract that onto your desktop. Oh, these freaking pop ups. Anyway, uh, okay. So for Auto Injector, we're going to need to do a couple things. We have our folder here that's got the executable right up at the top. We're going to need to put two files in here. So I'm going to put uh, my Japanese WAD in here. I'm going to paste that. And also, the emulator that we, the, sorry, not the emulator, the ROM that we made earlier with uh, SMRPG GVRP, uh, the Japanese one, I'm going to copy that into the auto injector root folder as well. If it'll let me. There we go. Okay. So, next thing to do is we launch the executable. In the menu, hit console mode and pick SNES. And then we got one option on each side. We have the Japanese WAD and the Japanese SMC file. So I'm going to call it randomizer and hit start. And it's done. Um, I tried doing that with the US one too. And I couldn't inject US ROM into US WAD because the WAD didn't have enough space in it. I couldn't. And I tried injecting US ROM into Japanese WAD, which worked but it crashed on loading, so I'm just only doing Japanese here. So if I refresh here, I got this new file called VC Randomizer and SMRPGJ.WAD. That's exactly what we want. So now uh, what we are going to do is go back to the SD card. Whoops, that's not the right one. Go back to the SD card and put the WAD inside the WAD folder inside the SD card. Drop it in there. If you don't if you don't have a if you don't have a wide uh, file in there, if you don't have a wide folder in your root, then you're going to have to make one. Just just uh, make a wide file in the root of your SD card and just drop your wide file inside there. That's probably the best place to do it. So now take the SD card out of your computer. Mm -hmm. Whoops, I dropped it. Don't drop your SD card. Put it back into your Wii. And go back to the Wii, and you're gonna launch Homebrew Channel again. Okay, now we're gonna go down to yet another WAD manager, which is that YWMM one that we haven't used yet. So load that. Select iOS version use, use 249, press A, keep this on disable, and switch this to, actually keep this on Wii SD slot, and hit down on your D-pad to select your randomizer WAD that you just made on your computer. So press A again to install WAD, and now it's just going to install. Okay, so that's done. Gonna exit. I'm gonna quit out of homebrew channel. Gonna go back to my system menu, and there's something gonna be a little different here. We got a new Mario RPG channel here called Randomizer, which is exactly what we want it to be, because Randomizer is what we called it in uh, Auto Injector Lod. So hit start. It'll tell us in no uncertain terms that we need to be using the classic controller. There we go. That's clear as day. And it's already looking hella crisp. So far so good. 
looking just like it did on RetroArch, except the sound synchronization is not quite as bad. In fact, you probably won't notice much of a difference if you play on RetroArch versus Wide Injection, but Wide Injection is like if you're super picky and you have the time to do it. So let's just watch this cutscene, make sure everything's all good. Let's get the show on the road. Alright, what do we got? What do we got? Two guys this time. And I got group hugs, so it's the same as when I was playing on Retro Arch. 20 HP. Decent attack stats. Ooh, I got lucky. So anyway, uh, that's how you install the randomizer on your Wii. I hope this was a very clear video. Um, one of the benefits to playing it on your Wii as opposed to an emulator is Wii's emulation is a little more stable. And if you're worried about having to play with a classic controller, you actually have options as far as that goes. Let me just pull up my desktop for a sec and show you something. So, if I go to, if I go to google.com and I look for RefNet, they have a, they have an adapter that lets you connect a Super Nintendo controller to a GameCube port. And uh, RefNet text stuff is really good. Um, there's always less than, there's maybe like a quarter of a frame of lag on their, on their devices. I have a couple of them myself. So you can actually play with a Super Nintendo controller on your Wii and use RetroArch or Wide Injection to play with the randomizer and have a stable frame rate while doing so. It's about as close as you're going to get to playing on a SNES. So anyway, there's still plenty of time to order one of these before December 10th. If you if that's the way you want to go. And yeah, hope to see you guys all in the race.